Happy Monday, everybody. It's your boy Jumpman Jones. You're now live inside episode. Oh, this is a bonus episode of Kicking Shit Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Bonus. In the building today, we got the usual suspects. Behind the camera is D Chocolate La- mm, Delight, the woman king. She is the homie. What's going on back there? Not much. What's up? To my right, man, is the funny, the talented, my boy Jails, aka Jelly. Put him on the bread till he's fed. Young Picasso, your GD Super, my man, comedian James D. Jellyfish. How you doing over there, my brother? It's good, y'all. And to my left is my boy, it's my partner, it's my dog, it's Mr. Jukebox, Johnny, a.k.a. Crown Daddy, a.k.a. Crown Poppy, or the El Himado Poppy, the Avion Don, the Terramana guy, the Malargo Ho, Mr. Steal Your Girl, give her right back because she got hammer toe as Jukebox. Johnny, man, um, thank you guys who ever listened to the bonus episode last week. We appreciate you. Um, we are on YouTube every Monday, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and uh, I think the YouTube podcast app, maybe, I don't know, don't care. Um, other than that, tonight is a, a bonus episode. We'll be back with episode 303 next week. Um, but other than that, man, um, let's just uh, we're gonna catch up on some things that we may have missed since everybody was out last week. We didn't get to talk about the content um, that we've been consuming. Uh, so what do we what do we want to start, content wise? Do we want to start with the Never Ever Mets, X Men ninety seven, <laughs> get that out the way, BMF, uh, uh, middle ground content we've been watching Never on Mets. YouTube. Yeah, let's start with the Never Mets, man. Try to get them. I'm trying to get them an after show. Okay, well, hey, the Never Mets, the Never Mets. So if y'all don't know, that's on HBO Max. It's only four episodes deep right now. Um, it is a show that Johnny mentioned on the last episode of three o two. At the end of the episode, he mentioned a show called The Never Ever Mess that he had started watching. He had told us about the couples on there, so we all decided to go and watch that joint. Uh, James, you haven't seen it, but we're going to catch you right up, put you in the groove. You should be able to kind of vibe off what the show is. But the ba- the premise of the show is these couples meet on met online, and they've been dating for years online, and they've never met his, each other in person. We got a couple that's been dating for three months online, three years online, 12 years online. Uh, twelve years online. Twelve it's crazy. years online. It's crazy, and they never seen each other. Never seen each other. Oh, I that's think crazy. Another couple's a year online, and um, now they've put them all in this house with like a, I don't know if that's a real counselor or a real therapist or whatever, but the the MC of the show is kind of doing like these one on ones with these couples, seeing if they could make it in the real world. So Johnny, I'll let you take it away because I know you know the names of these niggas, and I don't. I don't even know if I know the names. I just go by the couple. Oh, sorry, guys. You're fine. Uh, but yeah, so I think it starts off with five couples, the first episode. Um, and they, they, they meet for the first time, go on their first official date for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and that's when we see the couple. I think the guy is from Chicago. He's got like a gold grill, tattoos all over him. And uh, it looked like he uh, wanted to be a SoundCloud rapper. And his girl, his girl, he said she lied to him. Um. Uh, about how she looked. He said he felt a little catfish. Hey, I, was he wrong, though? Did you see the picture? Yeah, I saw the picture. She did. I mean, but it's 2024. We're getting catfished out here. If you meet no, online. Sure. <laughs> yeah, if you're excusable. online, because everybody putting their highlight real online. And if you meet after six or seven. Well, if, if you meet her out and she's like at a brunch. Or, <laughs> and there's makeup on. you at the yeah, brunch. She, yeah. It's still um, unacceptable. But yeah, they didn't really get along too well. Um, and I, they ended up kind of sparking a fight. Oh, you got the names? I got the names real quick. So we got Shay from Florida, Josh from Tennessee, dating 12 years. Mm-hmm. We got Joanna uh, and uh, Aaron. Joanna from Illinois, Aaron J from Georgia, dating nine months. We got Diamond from Florida and Aaron H from California, dating five years. We got Alexis <laughs> from Texas. This is the couple he's talking about now. Yep, okay. And Dominique from Illinois, dating for six months online. We got Sienna from New York and Brandon from Florida dated 10 months online. And I think last but not least, oh, shit, we got two, two more. more. We got yeah. Sunita from Florida and Chris from Florida dating three months online, both Haitian. And uh, Millie from California and Greg from California. This is the couple that both lived in L.A. that Johnny mentioned last week, dated for three years, never met. And they, they are online couples. That's so silly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we gotta try to get through this, but uh, yeah. So the first episode was basically about I think I forgot their name, uh, but they got into it. Alexis got, and Dominique. Alexis Thank and you. Dominique. They got kicked out the house because of the fight. Uh, she didn't see a way for them to reconcile after he basically uh, put, he put her his life at risk. Yeah, he put a hand, his hands on her. Uh, so they got kicked out the house first. 
Uh, I think the main story so far is Sienna and uh, what's my boy's name? Brandon. Brandon. They are uh, like what you would call a toxic couple, I think. No, just her. Just her. Just, just her. her. Just, just her. her. Um, she is always angry. It seems like her coming off mad or every little thing he do she just pisses her off and she lets him know about it. But to me, it just seems like a, a you know, shoot, a calm dude, mm-hmm. laid back. Uh, willing to have the conversation, but he wanted to have the conversation without the the name calling, without the the cussing and fighting. And basically, at the end of the last episode, you find out that they probably they pretty much threw two. They're gonna stick out the the show, but it looks like they they're agreed not to be together anymore. I knew they was done once. Uh, she said she wouldn't leave New York. Yeah, after she told him that she was okay with leaving New York, and he called that to her attention, and then she called him a bitch. Yeah. I, I think first of all, wig she got on pissing me off. I think, oh, yeah, it's like some locks or something, but yeah, she, like I don't know why she I keeps think. styling it like a beehive. It's and she a pretty lady, but you do see why she's, she's like 44 and single, yeah, why she's that old and single. Uh-huh. Um, I think the other one that everyone is questioning is Joanna and Aaron or Jody, the gay guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, huh? <laughs> the dangling earrings do throw you off, but. He claims to be, like, you know, cool with her being distant or not being together or whatever. Like, that's their thing. But I don't really understand their dynamic. It's given, like the woman said, like a roommate. Because she doesn't really provide any type of sexual or, I wouldn't say just sexual, just any attraction to him. Like, we haven't seen them on, you know, like a private you know, yeah, date no, since no the first date. Room. They not rubbing. Yeah, on each other. like the first date, he I think he kind of did for her because he doesn't drink, and so like the fact that he didn't know how to open up the wine bottle was kind of like, oh a, yeah, I forgot all about that. Yeah, he she didn't was know giving how to him open. hell about that. <laughs> she was so mad, and it's like he tried to do all this stuff and impress her, and she wasn't impressed. But then um I thought it was interesting how she kept giving Chris, you know, compliments and praises, but it's like she's not ever said that about the guy she's actually there for. Yeah. So Speaking it's, of Chris, it's interesting. I think I think that couple's gonna be the next to break up. Who is Chris? Chris uh, is the, the Haitian, Haitian couple. I think they're gonna be the next to break oh, up. Oh, his name is Chris. Yes, Sandia and Chris. They're oh, both Chris Haitian. Um, so Chris, he was in the you know kind of the spotlight because he was sitting around in the beginning telling all the guys how he he was not with um, Sandia and how he gets all these women and whatever, whatever. <laughs> and so when she would call it out or she kind of highlighted the things that bothered her, he immediately flipped it or gaslit her. And like, it's just given a lot of like right. narcissistic vibes. He was definitely that. And he, he don't strike me as a guy that need to date three months online, nor would date three months online. He looks like if he lived in Miami and she lived in Tampa, he would drive the hours to fuck. Or he would get her to him, pay for a ticket, whatever he needed to do to get Like, he don't strike me as the yeah. guy. Like, I don't understand why he's here. Because he, when you listen to him talk, he's always kind of, he's already kind of put it out there. Like, I'm that nigga. I get bitches. So why do I need yeah, you? Yeah, why do the long distance never met online? That's a good point. Yeah. But, yeah. He cla- but he claims that, well, According to her, they have the same family values. And uh, I guess because they are Haitian, they kind of meet Probably. on that foundation mm-hmm. of they want a family, the family, you know, Haitian family structure. So I don't I, know. I think the show is uh, I think the show is for him. I think it's the way to just gain more mm-hmm. followers. followers. Could be. I mean, because I think he is like a personal trainer type. of. I don't know what he does. That but. girl is too nice. To be sitting there looking stupid next to him. Yeah, yeah. that's all he continued like, to do to make her look stupid. Like, I think on that first night, the regular woman hearing that is like, all right, I'm out. Yeah, like she in like, the same room and they having, he having, a, she in the kitchen, he at the table with the guys and he talking about like uh, how he have three, three girls at a time. Uh, he don't settle down and stuff like that. I'm not with her. Yeah. I ain't with her. They so why girl. are you on the show? We, oh, because yeah, they're there lame. to see if things could work. Uh, in a relationship, I see. I see. Yeah, that's lame for like, him to right. put her on like that. Like, yeah, that's that's I think they the up. next couple to end things. I think she just gonna. I think the other girl's gonna be in her ear, rightfully so. I think Millie and Greg make. That's the L.A. couple. I they, think they make it. I think they're gonna make it. I think um, the last episode when she kind of brought to the attention of, you know, she had experienced some form of. Um, and you may have to bleep this part out, but experience some. Oh yeah. Right. Um, but she, I think that's kind of been her hiccup with being more intimate with him, 
and he doesn't know that. So I believe that whenever they do drop the next four episodes, she's going to have to tell him. She's going to have to have that conversation because he is very much attracted oh, he want to her. That thing. I wanted to ask you that earlier, Johnny, man. Have you, do you know any women personally that's been sexually assaulted? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say like extreme, but I've heard women like guys be putting a little bit too much pressure on it, but not like no real rape. Uh-huh. I haven't heard a story like that personally. I only know one person. You know one person? But, I mean, we used to be cool, but we ain't even cool like that no more. But, you know. She- what's it, uh, What's extreme? Like, I guess. So, oh, yeah, anything sure. other than extreme is like, all right, that's. I mean, I see why that's bad, but it's like, is it mid to you? Or is it just as, do you weigh them the same? Or is it just like, you can let that go? Or like, how do you I, feel about it? I guess everybody would experience it different. Because I know where we come from, it's been at times where we might have been a little bit too pushy with women. Yeah. And that was just the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like, everybody experienced it different. So maybe they are taking that as, that's traumatic to them. Yeah. Because um, I kind of came up thinking that rape was just forced rape. But as Me years too. go on, I've learned that there are other ways to rape someone. I think it's, um, well, in her case, if that's what she's hiding, no matter what that looks like, I think it's when you listen, if you open up your ears and listen to the story, it's more so a high person felt in the moment. Like, I think when you go back and look at the broad spectrum of the trigger warning word, <laughs> it's like, you don't factor in like did that pressure make that person feel like they got to do it and did that pressure cause trauma to them for the rest of their life yeah and that's that's why i was like do you know anybody me personally i know i know every spectrum of it from the pressure to the extreme to the when i was a little girl like i've heard stories right and so i think when they she tells this nigga this this is this is like very important to know because this also controls how people date. When you have been abused in some type of way going forward in life, that controls how you date, how you think about yeah. people, how you see people, or why you act a certain way, and why you timid, and why you scared. So it'll say a lot about her. So far, she seems like she's put together. Like, she don't even have really no trauma. She Honestly, the girl, Sienna from New York, seems like she's had a bad run-in with men. And she's Something taking it out on him. Uh, her her biggest issue which she said was the fact that she lost her mom young mm-hmm. and she just has had this i'm just on my cold. own this yeah just very much a independent staying in masculine energy type you know ordeal her whole life like that's just her that too and so i think this experience has kind of highlighted a little bit with other people seeing it and other women calling it out is that Um, Because even Shay said it, uh, she was like, you know, I think she's a sweet girl. She just has a very hard exterior. And she's probably used to men being more aggressive or matching her energy to keep her quiet. And he's not willing to do that. Yeah. Because he's just a genuinely nice guy. Uh, Yeah, I see that. And so it's like for her, she's able to kind of walk all over him or he's just not going to argue with her or go back and forth. And it's one of those things, I forget what they call it, where you, someone gets themselves hype. Like, they just keep talking and hype themselves up to make themselves angry. She does that a lot. Yeah. So I was going to ask, what part of New York is she from? We don't know. No. Uh, is it, is it New it. York City, then, isn't it? Well, I think she's about to say the Bronx, Brooklyn, one of them. I, nah, I don't if it's the Bronx. I want to think I heard Brooklyn, but I'm not yeah. sure. If it's the Bronx, we we already know. Oh, up. we already know, too. <laughs> but no, I think the dude. I, I, I factored that in, too. I felt like she was just really, like, I didn't think about what you said. I was like, oh, she a New York girl. It's for, it's her environment. Yeah, her environment is crazy. I was about to say, niggas is hollering. But then, what you think she would want something different instead of always having to, like, or maybe she's just into arguing with guys and going back to forth. I was about to say, she that's, don't know nothing better. That's New Yorkers, bro. They, they, they cat call like a motherfucker. You could just I be met walking. Some decent people from New York that, yeah, they talk shit, but the way you got to see how she act. You be like, hey, yo, ma, what's up? You looking good? Hey, nah, leave me alone. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's like that on a daily up there. I'm with Johnny. I bet, I've been up, but I, like I said, I can vouch for both sides of the spectrum. The girls from New York, I'm like, oh, she's from New York. And the girls, it's like, oh, she's sweet. She's from New York. I can't believe she's from New York. But I've seen both sides of that spectrum. You're right. Them niggas be wilding. Yeah, them niggas wild. So I'm niggas. interested in the next four episodes, though. Me I want to see what happens. Because I think at this point, I only have Shay and her guy making it. You don't the think guy. Bobby Brown and uh, the big lady going to make it? He had a baby on he her. Got, yeah, he had a baby and on her. And she not really 
she it's hard for her to let that go. He can suck all the toes he wants to. I don't think oh, she's yeah, gonna give it she up. She had a baby on him too. I remember the light skinned dude had a baby on his girl from Right, the, but the the old Bobby, dude did too. He had a baby on her. Hold on, Josh had a baby on old girl? Yeah, because he has yeah. a thirteen year old and a three year old and they've been oh, dating for twelve years. She I was like Michelle. Thinking Obama. they was gonna make it. <laughs> no, no, no. She they talked about that. I guess they worked through it. Like he had a baby when they disconnected, they got back together. Mm. So this baby is three years old. It's like they've worked through it. So okay. it was brought up, but it wasn't like she didn't focus on it. She I was ain't like, no Bobby Brown, did the gay know? nigga. Nah, no. the gay no. nigga ain't never got no coochie before. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, that's the uh, that's the never ever mess. No, the pastor is the Bobby Brown. Dude. Yeah, it, yeah. I re- I just realized his nails was painted too. I want to see the next episode because it looks like he going young. off on somebody. He, Ooh. I think he he tries to be the. He tries to be like the who the, is the pastor, the old the ass old man, man that the sucked 50, toes, the oldest oh, one in the yeah. house. He like fifty one. Now, that, now he know you wrong. He can't be sucking no toes. He su- he got sucking toes, nails painted. You can't be sucking he toes, doing all that. bro. You can't be doing no sexual shit. Y'all supposed to be praying. He, that's against the word. Hey, she yo. says she's not giving it up until marriage. That's still like that's you know you hey. can't suck no toes. How you a pastor and you sucking no. toes? Nigga? Why not? You might as well be sucking Satan Because you're not married right. <laughs> uh, okay. I thought you couldn't have If I, you're a Christian yeah. You ain't supposed to be doing yeah, that I, I, I thought that's why the Mormon people be soaking Because they say you can't have sex before marriage But they'll put it in and just let it sit there Christians can't have sex before marriage either. What Christians that just have sex before <laughs> marriage soaking. Soaking. soaking Yeah you just put it in and just oh, let you it just, sit there You just soaking <laughs> in the pussy Oh, nah, niggas just be breaking the rules of their Bible and telling you it's okay. Right. Right? It's marinating. So, uh, so, like, any sexual act you're not supposed to do before marriage? No. Oh, hell. Eh, That's man. Christianity, man. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to complete this uh, transition. Bro, so, hold up. I'm stuck on the soap. I at least want to make out with you. Because, <laughs> first, hold up. So, you just put it in there. Oh, soaking. Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's really true, but there's a thing going around that the, p- the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, yeah. uh, they would have, like, I've heard a couple stories, but the dude put it in and it just sit there. But then he'll get like somebody and his friend will come and like jump on the bed. I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you, you get pussy by default or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boy, you going straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you and your friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for being a road dog, nigga. You going on the road to hey, hell. Come, come in here, Taz, and jump on the bed for me, bro. <laughs> you know his name like Hiberius or something. <laughs> it ain't no damn Ted. Now how you jump? <laughs> you definitely pushing. Like you definitely, if you jump on the bed, I'm definitely doing this. Yeah, you doing that? And I, and it's not with your help. I'm now just doing it because it's the rhythm. Oh, of I'm definitely the doing that. <laughs> Shit, y'all are all freaks. First of all, you, your girl a freak for letting you do. Do it in there with your friends. Man, they all young. It's like they go to these little Christian camps or like summer camps with it, surrounded by Mormons. This is what they do in high school. Because, they, you know, them, they get married real young. But that's like the Christian girls who don't want to lose their, like, well, I've heard this for white girls. I haven't heard this for black Oh, yeah, they'll suck some dick. Uh, not take they'll it in either the booty. do that or they'll take it in the booty. Nigga, they don't that shit is, dick. how you going to take it in the booty and that nigga killed the whole city for fucking in the ass? <laughs> it's true that, man. <laughs> Right, right. What's that? You're crazy. That What's that story? That don't make no Is sense. that the story where the lady turned around and she yeah. turned into stone? Okay. Turned into a pillow of salt. Oh, okay. There you go. It don't make no sense. All right. Um, BMF. Y'all see BMF? Yeah, man. I can't wait to see next season and how bad it gets from here. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to Meech and Terry. Now they've been dropped off in Mexico to do the impossible. That's some bullshit. <laughs> Break some a bullshit. cartel member out of jail, right? Yes. Ooh. Oh um, my goodness, boy! Fifty Cent it turns into Tyler Perry. Shout like, out to Charles, though, man. Charles got his freedom, bro. Facts, man. My nigga Charles and about Lucille. to be a single man out here, bro. And Lucille got played, nigga. That's what you get. I feel bad for Lucille, bro. What? I do feel bad for Lucille. I thought you would have reveled in the fact that I this still, woman. I mean, I'm happy for Charles, man, because he wasn't happy in that situation either, man. He wasn't appreciated. I thought you would have reveled in the fact that she got played. Nah, nah. She, she didn't deserve that either, man. She lived okay. a hard life too. Okay. She lived a hard life too, but you know, seemed like they both found their passion, bro. Lucille, assist, uh, assistant pastor or whatever now, and Charles on the road doing music. Yeah, I um the online was right. 
they kept saying the, why they keep me in the hotels and this that, and the third and turn turn out they was right online that nigga had a whole family. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, but shout out to BMF. I'll watch that bad acting again next year. I hope they just fast too. forward to two thousand and three, please. Like, yeah, because what year are we in? Ninety nine now. We in the mid nineties. Oh, so too. we ain't even. Yeah, we ain't close. Oh yeah, because I don't. I think Meech probably the real Meech probably born in two thousand two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, little Meech. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, X Men ninety seven concluded this week, man. Shout uh, out to uh, good Charles show. Xavier. Man, first of all, my nigga Charles came back and stopped. Yeah, came back <laughs> in the pot. Right? That nigga crash land and start fucking brains up. I fuck with Charles, man. That's my nigga, man. My nigga Charles. <laughs> nah, he bro. did, man. <laughs> I didn't know he could cause you to turn into a fucking like baby. Oh that yeah, he was going wild. Yeah. That nigga come in probing minds, nigga. Your the mind last, is mine. Did you see the last episode? Yeah, I haven't, oh, but okay. I'm pretty sure okay. it's okay. off the chain. It was good. They just had a lot of cameos, and I was wondering what was the point of all these cameos. Because you know they're going they gonna venture off. This the some backup more plan. Shows. This the backup plan for this bullshit they've been doing with the movies. It's like, all right, the movies ain't hidden. Let's cartoon hit. Let's just recreate the universe in cartoon world. I think they calling that they calling it Marvel Animation Studios. But Spider Man come out later this year. It animated. worked for DC. Yeah, that's what we. I said kind of earlier. I was like, if they stick to this route, then the, people might finally say Marvel got some good cartoons because that had always been the, you know, the the knock against them is they cartoons was weak. The thing about uh, X Men ninety seven, this shit is truly made for like old adults because you know the ratings ain't that good. Oh, it's not. Mm-mm. I really? just watched this thing this this week on the ratings of X Men ninety seven. They said Wandavision doing better than that. That was a good answer. Wandavision was real. They that said was Wandavision good. is actually, yeah. Well, I, I I'm not surprised because Wandavision I think was the first show that they put on there, the first series on Disney Plus. I think that's the outside of Loki. That's the most watch and Marvel that was a good animated show. series. To me, Wandavision. It's one of the better series that Marvel put on Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah. One division. Yeah. Mm. I like the Loki. Yeah, Loki is probably the best pretty cool. one. Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. The rest of them, they, they weren't hitting on mm. that. Tell me about it. But I'm looking forward to next season of X-Men Echo was 97. Um, all right, black horror films, man. Here we go. Let's get into it, man. Give me, give me your five favorite. If you got five, if you don't have five, that's cool. I'm going to go around the room, though. I'm going to start with James. Five you have favorite. To start over here. Cause I always start my right right handed. I start with Johnny. Five favorite black oh, horror oh, films. Oh, All James up. is gonna do is the same thing I'm gonna do is listen to yours and gain <laughs> ideas. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I guess I'll start with the obvious one. Uh, us, not us. Uh, Get out. All right. All right. Uh, and then I would say uh, Tales from the Hood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's probably the number one. Can I get a timeout? Yep. Can I ask you how old you were when you first seen Texas? Uh, shit, I honestly don't know. I would probably say probably close to 10 or 11, maybe younger. Mm. Uh, right. I was older. Is uh, The Children of the Stairs? That's not black, is it? I don't know. Not okay. with a name like that. All right, all right, all right. Um, whew, man, I don't even know this genre that well, black horror. You got to put Candyman in there. I, I give you, I let you Google it. That way you get some ideas. So oh, I know okay, off the top okay, of the dome, do it's kind of hard. D, what you got over there? Let me see where you at. But Johnny got two out of his mouth. Um, I would say us, definitely. Us. Um, Spell. Never heard of it. I know well, exactly what you're Omari talking about. Omari Hardwick and Loretta Devon. I know, I know exactly. Shout out to my nigga Omari. I didn't know my nigga Omari was doing that. He was in a scary um, movie? Yeah, it's, it's like... Uh, Real scary, uh, to me, to me, because I I started watching it at night and then I turned it off and watched during the day, but um, I would say what was that um back in the day? It's not scary no more, but it was like a old school horror film. Tales uh, from the Hood. Uh, Tales from the Hood. It was actually really good. So yeah, I would pick them. Yeah, but I, I was gonna say Leprechaun. Oh, Leprechaun in the Hood. Yeah. Okay. Blackula. Leprechaun in the Hood was good as You saying Black Epps? No, I just said it. It just popped up on oh. me. <laughs> All right, James, where you at? What's yours? Man, I'm going all hood classes, bro. Because right. there was some hood classes back then. But, of course, Tales from the Hood. Snoop Dogg had a Tales from the Hood that was scary as fuck. Bones? Yeah, I'm looking at it, it says Bones. Bones. Yeah, bones. man. Bones. People and when I tell it, you, bones was that shit, shit was scary as fuck. Bones and it was, was a lot of cussing. Bones and dry was humping. good. 
but it was good. Damn, yeah. Um, let's see. Now, now I know I said this earlier because we got some starring blacks that should be up in on this list. What you thinking list. about? Let me hear what you thinking about. You, 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 some starring blacks. It's, at least give at least make it sixty to seventy percent. I say, man, uh, Jada Pickett and Scream, man, that that's that a white shit should. It white is, but that her movie. her role. Yeah, I thought you was gonna say an Oscar. I thought you was gonna say something like, uh, "What's the shit Beyonce in?" But that's suspense. What's the shit with a uh, light skinned man with the the good eyes is the killer, and it's the oh, black Michael family. Ely. Yeah, what's the shit where he's like he he the he the neighbor he want the wife so he gonna kill the husband to get to the wife. I think oh. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? That was in the movie. That's an old ass movie. I thought he killed a boyfriend and took the watch. Yeah. He was wearing the boyfriend's watch. I can't think he, of the name um, of it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, I, I'm going I'm to go. Uh, I'm definitely going to go Tales from the Hood. I'm going to go Us. Is that Us? No, 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 no. no. Not Us. Um, get Out? Get Out. Tales from the Hood. Mm, excuse me. Fucking Get Out. And I had these at the top of my head. The Blackening. I love The Blackening. I ain't um, seen that yet. That's pretty is good. It scary? Uh, yeah, it it is. It's it's like a it's, so they did like a scream a black version of scream spinoff. You know oh, what I'm saying? Okay. Like it's that esque movie. It's got a killer in it. And I shit. might watch it tonight. I said um, I wanted to watch Black Box. Has anybody seen that? Black I Box. I haven't heard good. of it. I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. No, I'm thinking about Black Phone. Um, Black Nail Tales from the Hood. Uh, get out. I'm not gonna say us. I'm gonna say Candy Man. Candy Man. You gotta say Candy, Candy Man. Candy That's mine. like at least number two. Uh, Jordan Peele's Candy Man. Um, Leprechaun. I don't know Leprechaun in the Hood. I do like Leprechaun in the Hood. Leprechaun. But before I watch Leprechaun in the Hood, where's I'm me go? Probably. Ah, uh, it's not. It's not them. It's a. Uh, it's another joint. I can't think of the top of my head. So we got Candyman. We got uh, Get Out. We got uh, Blackman. <laughs> Tales from the Hood. I don't think I got a fifth. I don't think I got it. Well, I found out Children Under the Stairs is black. Okay, so I'm putting that in there. And I will add that to my list. I ain't never seen What else did you see on that list? Uh, What's some black horror films uh, that we may be missing? JD's Revenge. That's a 70s movie. All right. Um, Blade. No one said Blade. That ain't horror. That's not horror. It's considered part of black horror. Okay, well, that's Marvel, but all right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was never scared. Sweetheart. Remember? Never heard of that. Never heard of that. Y'all watched it. Well, we talked about it. It was during the. Uh, it came out in 2019. Then line between love and hate. That should be a horror. horror. Oh, yeah, you right about oh, that. Oh yeah, scary. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Is that it? Nah, this one I, I feel got, like we got the more list movies I got is 25 movies, but Where'd name a couple. All right, it goes Bones, Demon Knight. Never heard of it. Bones. Oh, that's a Tales from the Crypt uh, story. Uh, Tales from the Hood, Blackula, Blade. Oh, we looking at the same home. list. Oh, oh, we are? Yeah. Ma. Oh, Ma. Ma, yeah, Ma. Ma. Oh, good. Netflix? No, you ain't fuck with Ma. Man, that shit was silly as hell, <laughs> yeah, bro. It was silly, but it was supposed to be a horror. I like Ma. Uh, I heard about this movie. I think I started watching it. His house is on Netflix. Uh, no, I never started it. I think it was about exactly like a black family about. that moved into like this random ass neighborhood and weird shit just started happening. Mm. I know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Um, Are we going to name some series? Because there's some series that's scary as fuck. Vampire in Brooklyn is considered... A horror film? Get Out is number one on this list. Zombies of Sugar Hill. Alright. Zombies of Sugar Hill. We got to make a black (laughs) horror film, bro. Alright. Real quick. Just off the top of your dome. TV series. I don't want to go too long. TV series. Them. Got them. uh, 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 Lovecraft Country. Oh, there you go. That's that shit one. got a little yeah. scary you that, for you a minute. You call that horror? Hell yeah, that okay. shit got a scary that's, for a that's second. That's horror sci-fi. Yeah. I thought it was sci-fi, but all right, horror. Um, what else? Goddamn. Shit. The, I last, would say the last, last Saw movie with Chris Rock. Yeah. <laughs> that's black starring. Like James was saying. Black um, starring. But see, that, that'd be the thing. We have so many stuff that's like black stars. Starring. It's not, mm-hmm. yeah. I was trying to say, if we got... Majority of the roles, then it's our movie. Even if the white man wrote oh, it, shit. he seemed well, fit to use us in it. I was Madea about to say Halloween. my nigga from Predator. <laughs> that that <laughs> nigga was holding it down, nigga. What's my nigga name? He just died too. Come on. Man. Oh, you talking about oh, Carl <laughs> Weathers? <laughs> yeah, man, Commando. That nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to say is like in the black horror films that we create, right? I want to know if y'all find this 
something that y'all are y'all more scared of the 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 thing that's supposed to be scary or the racism that happens in the movie? Uh, I think mm-hmm. me personally, the movies that scare me, especially like Tales from the Hood, mm-hmm. a lot of those movies, it's the I don't I don't know if it's the thing. It's like the the voodoo be getting the, me. Yeah, the spiritual, the shit that's like <laughs> so the spiritual, spiritual demonic, yeah. like the the stuff that really does align with our ancestry. It's like, all right, hold up, nigga. Yeah, because was ain't it tales in the crypt where they made the dolls? Yeah. Or tales from the hood where they made the that shit scared the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> now when he took them niggas to hell. When them niggas thought they was uh, alive. The yeah, yeah, they yeah, they yeah. Alive. yeah. Like, Welcome to hell, motherfucker. <laughs> that shit scared the hell out of me. I, I think that, but every story that we write has black people has this layer of racism. Even with the dolls, there was a layer of racism in it. They came out the painting. Yeah, they came out, um, out of the painting. So it's like, I guess, like when I was watching them, I was more afraid. After I knew what was happening, Yeah, I'm like, all right, that nigga cool. So after that, I'm more afraid for the characters when they encounter the police officer. Like, mm. in the scene where he raided the house, he's throwing the drugs everywhere, and he's slapping this nigga up in front of an old girl. And I'm like, is she going to speak up for him? Like, is he mm-hmm. going to kill him? Then when he picked up the son, threw him in the back seat, I'm more frightened that he was going to kill the son. Like, I'm not even worried about the man that's haunting the family no more. I'm more so, and then in the scene where he's on top of the house and in in season one, he's trying to put the antenna up, and now he got to fight three white men. Like, I already know what the ghost is. I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? I think the only, it's a few movies like Tales from the Hood, no. I think they did a good job of having racism in the movie, but it's not like the main, one of the, one of the many things we're fighting. Right. And I guess the point of my statement or the point of my prompt is, why is it that when we create our own movies, we not only got to fight the poltergeist or the murderer, we got to deal with the races, either people or the police. So we're like outside of Candyman and what's the other one where, uh, where, where the spaceship was in the sky? Oh, uh, nope. Nope. Yeah. Outside of a couple movies like that, why is most of our movies like, I, I gotta get rid of the poltergeist and then the police about to kick in the door because and shoot. Because that shit's still prevalent I mean, to this day. What scare black people? Yeah. Think, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, I was just gonna say that it's still prevalent to this day. Like, it, I mean, I hate to say it, but the ultimate enemy against fucking black people sometimes seem like it's the police. So it's just like, it's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, that adds to the horror. Like, okay, a motherfucking monster's fucking catch or chasing me but okay i run into the police is he gonna believe me is he gonna shoot me is he gonna take me to jail so it adds you know what i'm saying it. that shit adds yeah. to it i like that okay i was, I was I'm, I'm going there as well because when you think about like jason michael myers like in those films at some point in time the one of the heroes or if the hero a soul hero is usually like a police officer mm-hmm. or the sheriff or the deputy or somebody that believes the person that's dealing with this murder or you know whatever when it comes to we, we watch those films like oh why didn't you do this or why didn't you run over here why did da da when we look at things from a black perspective we don't have that luxury and like James said, it's still prevalent. Like we can't run until I can't run up to a, a white man. Like, oh my God, this guy is chasing me. He's going to kill me. He's going to look at me like, what you do? I'm going to just keep running. I'm just, man, <laughs> <laughs> right. In, in order to save my life, I'm going to just keep fucking going and, yeah. and take care of myself. Uh, damn, well, you was chucking them arms, nigga. <laughs> you was like, yeah. but, oh, white man, hold up. <laughs> no, nah, fuck it. <laughs> Running. That nigga run like a '90s cartoon <laughs> right. character, man. Jay, I mean, I mean, D Johnny, y'all was, was that was I was going to just say the same thing, James. I think it, it brings a sort sort of reality. Sometimes reality is scary. Okay. Yeah, I like reality that. Reality is definitely scary. Perspective. Do y'all enjoy black horror or do y'all like do, when do it's y'all done, even right? enjoy horror? You know what I'm saying? Do y'all I do like a good genre? scary movie. Okay. I'm, I'm more into this, the movies I like involves like a. Uh, some type of like entity or like going into another realm. Like my favorite scary movie is Insidious. Ooh. Cause every time that little nigga fall asleep, boy, I get scared. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid as hell. 
<laughs> I feel like the best scary movies are the movies that you can't see by yourself. You got to go yes. with somebody. Yeah. Yes. You can be like, hell no, I'm not seeing this shit by myself. I remember the first Ain't paranormal no activity. I went to the movies to watch that shit, and I went to the apartment by myself, man. I was in that bitch, boy. I, was, I had my back to the wall and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Scared as hell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if man. If it wants you, it's going to get you. Now, uh, horror is one of, well, not horror. I would say some horror, but scary movies are a genre I love. Like, I love Halloween. I love Scream. You know, I'm not too into stuff like Insidious, but I have seen, like, Amity, uh, not Amityville Horror. We own that. But what was the one with my girl, the doll, Caroline? What was her name? Megan. Not Megan. Not Megan. Uh, uh, oh, you know, Annabelle. 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 I Speaking see Annabelle. of scary movie, and the main character was black. Oh, God. I'm going to have to put this in the honorable mention. But what's that movie with the fucking hand? That shit just came out when the girl grabbed the hand. Oh, and it like they were supposed to let the hand go or they'll kill you or do something like that. They, it was like you would see like a monster. They would like oh, see real? shit when you yeah, grab that. Yeah. That movie was scary as yeah. fuck. So, so I, can you Google the name for I'm me real to. quick? Because they take, so they found this hand and they take it and that the kids like this. yeah and the kids touch it and everybody's passing it around and touching it you gotta hold on to it though but the one girl is having like these experiences like it's really gelling I watched that shit that and, shit um, was good man yo yeah I think how it ended was so f- talk to me Talk to them. Man, that's a good ass movie I right there that. I don't think I ever man, heard of it man go watch that shit they, right they would have now. like parties where somebody's supposed to time how long you hold on to this hand and what happened was it was only supposed to be the older kids and somebody's little brother would like you know begged him to do it mm-hmm. they let him do it but because he was so young it like i don't know did it kill him it did no, something the, uh, to him, but it was the monster she took a liking to the little boy mm-hmm. yeah so the little boy started seeing like shit during the day like nigga be chilling Next oh, thing you know, you see like a crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna check that one out. It's called Talk to Me. Yeah, yeah. man. Came out t- uh, 2022. Give y'all a review. Man, that movie good as hell. All right. And the girl black. Even though she a the token. The main character is black. Yeah, yeah. Even though she a token, the whole movie. <laughs> Hold on. Ain't she mixed? Ain't she raised yeah, by white people in the movie? Day she speaking probably of, is. Speaking of tokens. She probably is. Um, I don't have anything else. You guys, uh, Give me a playoff predictions. This will come out Monday. So whatever's going to happen this week Man, has I, already happened. I think the Knicks going to beat Indiana. And I think the Knicks are going to have a deep run. But they're not going to pass the Celtics. I can't bet against the Celtics. They've been there. <laughs> They've been there too many times, man. Y'all They've been there too many times. Y'all, y'all niggas should know by now. Like me. I was about to say the same thing. Like, come on, Y'all bro. niggas just said before the show if started, the, I don't know about the Celtics, man. I'm be real, though. If the Celtics don't win or at least go to the finals, bro, y'all got to disband, bro. Y'all got to break that team up, man. Nah, you can't they break up to, a team bro. going to the finals. They got to. They got to. Back-to-back finals appearances. I don't know. I don't think you They got to let up. either Jalen walk or they got to let. Uh, and replace him with who? Oh, they got to let Tatum walk. And and y'all got to try this shit again, bro, because there's no way, bro. Like, y'all, y'all them niggas been, well, how long they been together? Uh, Since LeBron was in Cleveland. Okay, like seven plus something years, yeah, bro. Yeah. And y'all niggas always go to the playoffs or at least get. I think LeBron last year in Cleveland is when they got together. Man, look, dog. Y'all going to have to do something because this shit ain't working out, dog. I would say one thing. It's hard to make it to the to the Eastern Conference Finals. I agree. And if, for them to go three years out of you last said the four. Eastern Conference? Yeah. No, nah, I doubt it. To be there because who's been there besides them three out of the last four years? You right. Miami? You right though, but if you they always say the West is stronger. Like people if the West was on the East, it'd be a lot more teams in the playoffs. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I would break them up. I would do what they continue to do. Add a piece here and there and see if they help. Uh oh. but yeah, I'm with you. Knicks and Celtics. I'll probably say the Celtics beat the Knicks just based off of the firepower. Uh and then on the East West. I'm I I mean on the West, I say Nuggets, Dallas, and I'm gonna say Dallas goes to the finals. You say Dallas over yeah. Nuggets? Yeah, they look nah. good to me. Nah. You bet I that? I can't see it. Would I bet that? No. Okay. I was about to say, who going who gonna to watch Jokic? Lively? No. I don't know, man. I mean, Dallas been there, what, two years ago they went to the finals when they Gaffer? lost to uh, Milwaukee? They a good team. Who is Dallas playing right now at the moment? They are playing uh, OKC. They up 2-1 yeah, they or 3-1 on OKC, something like that. Oh, they up? Yeah, yeah, they up. Mm. Damn. That's crazy. 
It's crazy. That is crazy. And the thing is, Luka and Kyrie not playing like they. I think they averaging twenty two. Nigga, that's good. I did want to get your opinion on um real quick. Uh, was Shannon Sharp wrong in his judgment of Shaq? I don't think so because I watched the whole thing. I was watching it live uh, when they was announcing it. And Shaq, to me, I was like, damn, why the hell is Shaq going so hard? And then he started talking about him and uh, Steve Nash. So I think he does. I think he was kind of going a little bit too hard on him. Uh, I was like, okay, you didn't vote. So all you're giving is your opinion. Who Shaq? Yeah. Shaq has such a dominant history in the NBA. He got room to talk. He got rings to show yeah. for you know what i'm saying but i mean him and shannon beefing i feel like that, that shit, was our call for i like, feel like that shit whack bro like why are you like going to make this track i like Shaq. you know what i'm saying like come yeah. on bro just invite that nigga but on SGA your show could have one but i mean again so could have jokic yeah I, mean, I don't think shannon sharp needed to delve into the details of why Shaq wasn't as great as he could have been. I mm-hmm. think that's where he found offense. Yeah. Because as a fan of sports, I don't think he said anything different than Kobe said or Phil Jackson said, even quoted Phil Jackson when he said it. So I think Shaq's pride and ego takes a hit because it's like, I'm a three-time NBA champion. I'm one of the top 50 greatest players of all time. Mm -hmm. Who are you, Shannon Sharp, to diss my work ethic? You don't know my work ethic. And, you know, Shannon Sharp, you know, I I, I feel like Shaq is validated, not in the diss song, but just having to react. I don't think it was worth a sentence. I would rather those brothers sit down like grown-ass men because Shaq is sensitive about... His legacy. That nigga too big to be sensitive. Yeah, yeah he's sensitive about his You talk legacy. about his legacy, he he on your because ass. Because he wants, he does. Shannon was right. He do want to be in those conversations, and he's just not. Yeah, he's but just who, not. Who is the best? Who's the best center of all? It's time? not about the best center though. The thing was the greatest. Shaq, he, Shannon said, when we talk about the greatest players, no position, players, your name should be brought up, and it's not. Now, Chad, I think wanted to beg to differ. But I think there's, if we're talking generalizations, we argue in barbershops, Jordan and Brian. We are arguing barbershops. We've argued even Iverson and Kobe. We've argued everybody, but we never, we never argued with Shaq. Yeah, I, you, I gotta agree with that. I ain't never heard Shaq and somebody top five. But like, I, also, I ain't trying to be biased. But I'm yeah. for real. I want to also want to say they don't mean Shaq ain't great. Yeah. I just think he play. It's like the quarterback. It's like the the tackle position. It's a non-glorified position, yeah. especially nowadays. If you play center, that's that's not really a glorified position amongst people. Like, the most glorified positions are the positions that razzle and dazzle. I feel you. Like, <laughs> Kelsey is probably the most popular center that we've ever seen before. It's basically just because of who he is. It's not yeah. based off how he... People not be like, damn, you see that block Kelsey put out there? No one care about that. Yeah, Who I, is this? Uh, Jason Kelsey from the, the just retired Travis Kelsey uh, older brother. Oh, okay. He like they say he might be the best center of all time. Oh, but yeah. nobody cares. We love our we love our small forwards and we love our guards. No matter what happens. Yeah, the flash. It was just crazy. Shaq it's the was flash. flashy. He like he was powerful and he had some good passes yeah. as well. Underrated pass. But right. ain't got shit on a Grant Hill highlight reel. <laughs> right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like, ah, I mean, it's by default, but I mean, Shaq, to me, yeah. Well, one thing I think I dominant. did with my homeboys one time, we did like uh, name your all time starting five, and a lot of people had Shaq on there. But see, when you throw, when you make it positions, yeah. Now, yeah. as we get older and the positions go away, you know, our old asses might put Shaq on there, but the kids might, you know, might not put a Shaq on there. And the, and the NBA is so positionless now, like, the centers don't even do what Shaq did. Shaq Damn, did one that's thing. for sure. The centers do oh, everything yeah. now, so. That's why Hakeem was giving them the fucking business. Boy, also, that dream um, shake, that shit's happened. still effective. One more yeah. thing I wanted to get your opinion on. Oh, what did you think of the WNBA opener last night? Oh, that was entertaining, man. I ain't never been excited to watch female basketball like that. It was entertaining. I'm happy for the girls. Clarkson played. Yeah, she played. She oh. had a. Uh, she turned the ball over. She had a double double from points and turnovers. How much? I don't think she had twenty and eleven. That's twenty and eleven. Yeah. Eleven turnovers. Yeah. Oh. But her team was turned the ball over too. She wasn't the only one. They lost. Yeah. Okay. With well, eleven turnovers, I. I <laughs> she a true rookie though. Like, you know, twenty points is impressive. 
Um, she complained a lot. I mean, I remember watching a few of the Iowa games where she complains a lot, but she like on LeBron level with the complaints, bro. Because she is like she was that. Yeah. So she yeah she does complain a lot. She will complain after everything, like after every every fucking play. But you gotta you right you you ain't watched her play. I didn't see her complain last night, but also was in and out. Um, I didn't know that team. Man, those are grown ass women. I told y'all this. <laughs> I told y'all this months ago. I'm ready to. I'm ready to see these girls play with these grown ass women who are professionals. And then, like, just watching a professional WNBA game is so different from college. College is played like. Uh, yeah, the game was a little different. The, the it's way so it professional. Moved. It's well. It's it just moves and flows so like. Hey, hey. You gotta be in shape. Yeah, they, they was getting up and down the court. I'm like, hey, I'm tired already. Yeah. So, and they're not going to run those plays for Kaylin. Like, if you watch Iowa play, ISO top of the key, let her create. Yeah, you can uh, see yeah. why she had 40, 50 points a game. Cause yeah. Because pretty much every yeah, play is up. either you shoot or you pass. Green but I, yeah, but yeah. option one is Aaliyah Boston. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You she had a bad ball. game, too. Yeah. From what I can see. But I'm going to follow it. Fuck it, man. I ain't got nothing else to do. Is I'm, she a good, like, disher? A, oh, it's a great passer. Yeah. Yeah. She's a great passer. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering because, and I, I think experience. She gonna she gonna show better. She get, she has to because she it's like she got too much of a good game not for it not to correlate. See, the thing that she's gonna need, she gonna need them assists to go along with her points because I mean honestly that's what makes a be, a great point guard and you got control over the game when you can play make. Yeah. She going to have to step her playmaking up. I think, let me see. I, I heavily want, agree with that. That's how she's going to get her points. Yeah. 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 I want to see maybe if Boston, like, miss a couple games and say she tweak her ankle or something, and then they give yeah. her that, like, give uh, yes. Caitlin the game and see how she act then. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, man. I'm closing this show out. That's it, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed, man. Thank y'all for joining us this morning. Listen, y'all got any final thoughts before we wrap out of here? Hell yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, nigga. Man, you, you, you wish you would see me in the motherfucking woods well, instead hey, of a motherfucking pedal. I was trying to pedal studs like the internet ain't about to kill me this week. <laughs> <laughs> Have at me. I stand by what that I said. That conversation won't be on YouTube. That was pretty sweet. Oh, okay, okay. That, that you got lucky. Yeah. Oh, it won't be? Oh, damn. Now, only people that listen to the audio podcast will hear the bear conversation. Oh, okay. You don't listen to the audio podcast. That, that, that need to be... <laughs> The first part, but anyways, um, X Man ninety seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, Y'all bring it's back the real stand. costumes, the ugly ass vintage costumes. I'm a, I'm excited for the future of Marvel and their animated series. Yeah. Uh, oh, buddy, tripping on uh on that show. You meet match, whatever it's called. Oh, never met. Yeah, don't never be sucking met. no toes, nigga. You a pastor, nigga. I know, nigga. I don't up. know, man. I, yeah, I, nigga, I, I don't the, mind sucking a toe or two. Bro, that's the dirtiest act ever. Mm-hmm. Probably eating butt. Probably worse to eating toes. Nah, I'm pretty like sure that. Oh, he definitely eat butt. That nigga said, I love a BBW. Yeah, oh, yeah. He ain't that ass. That nigga, that shit like a bug in a KFC. <laughs> All right, man, listen. <laughs> I'm signing off for Johnny. I'm signing off for James. I'm signing off for D, man. We want you guys out there to love the life you live say free and the free. people in it. <laughs> Find the positive in every situation <laughs> and live in the moment because this life is not forever. Uh, I'm Joe nigga, Barry Toes, man. We're going to talk to y'all next dipping week. Dipping the biscuit in the gravy. <laughs> and we're going in. That's what's called soffing, my boy. <laughs> called a sock. Yeah, yeah, you're on the radio? What's the final time of that film?